an organization helping farm cooperatives and sustainable food development internationally, highlighted on this episode. Living, working, and volunteering in the U.S. national parks on travel television. All this and more, now on to our first stop. Hi, we're here with Charles Phillips, the President and CEO of Service for Peace. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure, Amy. And can you tell us uh, what is unique about your organization? Well, I think one of the uh, most salient characteristics of our programs is the involvement of college students, especially college students who want to make a difference in the world. We are walking towards um, Jilmar, correct me if I'm wrong, it's called Lagal de Susana. This is where the community is that we're going to be building the school? Yeah. One of our central focus of our mission is to create a culture of service. And we believe that primary to creating a culture of peace within communities that we need to uplift and raise the ethic of service within communities. Students come not just as individuals, but they become part of a global team. Uh, the students are paired together with local students and together with some of the uh, residents within the community, uh, as well as one of the effects of uh, students coming from abroad is to create kind of a sense of excitement in the mm -hmm. community. This weather is awesome. I'm moving here. Initially, they're sort of wondering what are they doing there, what is the purpose of this. Mm -hmm. uh, they come to find out that the university students have paid their own airfare to come over there. They're not getting paid. And it attracts the attention of the community. How is your organization connected to the Building Bridges Coalition and, and why do you think that's important? The Building Bridges Coalition is an important uh, coalition of organizations that are advocating for international volunteerism. And so we feel it's important to support their efforts and support the goals of the international volunteer sector. Yeah. Our community programs are ongoing, so even mm -hmm. though the students will be there only two or three weeks, but the work continues because it's community driven. No solamente eh, pasamos unas dos semanas en la comunidad y nos vamos dejando, ni dejando las semillas solamente, sino que la misión de Servicio para la Paz es para crear comunidades de paz. Y para hacer eso necesitamos muchos voluntarios. We organized a cruise for Haiti on Twitter, of all places. I sent out a tweet and said, who wants to put together a fundraiser? Two people stepped up, and from that, we were able to create an amazing experience. The cruise for Haiti raised over $5,500 in cash donations for two charities, which are Airline Ambassadors and For Haiti With Love. We also raised over $25,000 of in-kind donations for those two or organizations. We traveled on Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas. The Royal Caribbean was very generous in helping us transport six pallets of aid to Haiti to benefit for Haiti with Love's orphanage and medical clinic. We spent our sea days sorting through hundreds of pounds of donations that we all brought on board and making sure that each child got an individualized holiday gift bag and numerous personalized holiday gift cards. The volunteers spent most of their time working on our projects. We spent a little bit of time enjoying the amenities on the ship. In all, it was a fantastic experience, one that we would love to do again in this pioneering Fallen Tourism Market called Fallen Cruising.
Joe Carey. So this box right here, this is one of our six or seven pallets that are coming to your organization, right? That's right. So you were excited to get it, right? Oh yes, and there's cholera medicine on the others. Um, cruising, when you do that, creates a huge ripple effect in the island because it changes the nature of cruising from a thing that takes to a thing that gives back, and that's substantial. Fallen cruising shows that cruise passengers really want to help and they really do want to make a difference in that island in Port of Paul. Go to the orphanages and give back to the people. in Haiti already, you're building communities there. How can right. people get more involved with what you're doing? Yeah, we're providing uh, ways for people to get involved in Haiti and communities in Mirbele and Pondiasu, and they would just go to our website. We're going to be setting up regular missions where people can come and build a virtual classroom or uh, uh, build a medical clinic. We're also building safe houses for trafficked children, which is a big issue in Haiti. Good. Well, you know, we, I guess it's time to go debark, and it's been great working with you all week, and yeah. here's to more trips. Cheryl Kane is a writer, adventurer, and educator. She has written several books on volunteering, including the latest, Volunteer Vacations Across America. The book includes over 200 affordable trips throughout the United States, from free opportunities to internships, stipends, and volunteerism packages. Having traveled to almost every state, this guide chronicles a long list of volunteer activities. Travel Television recently spoke with Cheryl and now she shares some of her favorite trips. It's really exciting when you go to a new place and you connect, when you have a specific job or volunteer position or a goal in mind, you become part of the community mm -hmm. and you really connect with the locals and you learn to do things the way they do. And it's not just visiting. I say that you don't want to just visit, you want to get involved and give back. Right. And when I was researching my first book, Immersion Travel USA, which my website is also immersiontraveler.com, mm -hmm. that's when I realized that there were so few books that focused on volunteer vacations here in the United States. So many of the books would have a hundred all over Europe and all over the world with maybe 25, 30 here in the United States. And I said, people need our help right here. And the best thing about having the trips right here in the United States is also that you can revisit. You can connect with places, learn about something, match your passion and your interest to things you want to do right here. What do people feel like coming out of an experience like that? What, what have they said to you after they've come out of an experience of working at a national park? Being a part of, part of it as opposed to just a visitor to it. They say that they will never forget it because you're in a position not only to interact with people from all over the world. You develop a deeper appreciation for what we have right here. Mm -hmm. Because very often you have people coming from all over and you see it through their eyes. And then you develop this very strong sense of pride. I mean, I we're very it. happy 
that people before us were smart enough to protect these lands mm -hmm. because it's absolutely amazing what you can experience. And when you are staying in the park, chances are you can go out in the morning right. and you can see a bear on your front porch or you can see um, an eagle flying overhead and experiences that you just don't ordinarily get. Thank you very much. So. I love what I do. And people really love animals. We have such a, a soft spot in our heart. And it's so important to protect the animals of our world so that they are here and healthy for future generations and our children to Absolutely. enjoy as well. Absolutely. So check it out on my website, ImmersionTraveler.com. Volunteer vacations across America and Immersion Travel USA are both available through all major bookstores and Amazon.com. Great, great. Thank you. Thanks for coming again. Thank you. I loved it. Hi, I'm Cheryl Kane, the host of Volunteer Across America TV, and I need you to make TV with me. We'll be visiting interesting locales across the United States, and you will be learning how to handle being on TV cameras, being in front of a microphone, videotaping your own experience, and using the social networks, all to volunteer and give back to each community that we visit. Check it out on my website, volunteeracrossamericatv.com and let's give back to one community at a time. I'm Cheryl Kane. Hi. I'm Katie Daly with TravelTelevision.org. I'm here with Peter Greenberg, a travel expert, and we want to learn a little bit more about uh, volunteering in the United States. Can you tell me a bit about that? Sure I can. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing areas of the travel segments in the travel industry. Uh, people really want to give back as opposed to just lay out on the beach. In many cases they want to book edit, do both, and you can. You can go to the spa one day and then work with orphanages the next. Uh, and in fact, I'm on the board of an organization that does just that. It's called Airline Ambassadors. Uh, 6,000 airline pilots, flight attendants, maintenance people with 34 different airlines. And we run between 10 and 12 missions a month to orphanages around the world. And uh, it's the best vacation you can have because what you think you're giving, you're getting back so much more. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what does this mean for a younger generation as well as baby boomers? How oh, do they get involved? It means a lot for the younger generation. And I start with the age of six if you want to get young because if the kids bring their parents, they're going to be happy. Uh, I think kids should be much more involved in travel decisions anyway. They'll be happier on the trip. Uh, and kids are leading the way. They're leading the way in terms of volunteer vacations. They're leading the way in terms of environmental travel. They're leading the way in terms of educational travel. And if the kids are happy, they'll bring their parents. Wonderful. And do you see any upcoming trends with this? Is this a growing thing? Oh, it's already growing. Uh, and it's not about cost, and it's not about price, and it's not about time. It's about accessibility and experience. And that's really what the travel industry has to learn, that it's not about being competitive on rate or price. It's about being competitive on value. And there's nothing more valuable to me than a volunteer vacation. With over 93 projects in 42 countries, ACDI VOCA is one of the oldest and largest international development organizations fostering broad-based economic growth and wise stewardship of food and agriculture. The Agricultural Cooperation Development International, ACDI, was formed in 1963 by major U.S. farm co-ops with a goal to provide expertise and support to cooperative enterprises in developing countries. Volunteers and Overseas Cooperative Assistance, VOCA, was established in 1970 to provide volunteer assistance to developing countries. The VOCA was the first to implement the U.S. aid-funded Farmer to Farmer program in 1985. In 1997, VOCA and ACDI merged to form ACDI VOCA. This merger combined ACDI's long-standing development approaches and VOCA's people-to-people -people volunteer activities and programs. The current entity has worked in over 145 nations to promote economic growth opportunities for cooperatives, enterprises, and communities through innovative applications of sound business practices. Travel Television spoke with Diane Roach about the organization. ACDI Barca currently has a food security program in Haiti. When the earthquake struck last January, our staff worldwide, which numbers over 1,000 people, wanted and had to do something. We knew that a lot of money was flowing in for relief work, 
Well, relief work is not what ACDI VOCA does. We do recovery work. We do economic development work. So out of this money that we raised, which was $100,000, we created the REACH project. And the REACH project is a wonderful project to help rebuild Haiti. How to allocate the $100,000 REACH fund? According to Emmett Murphy, the most pressing need is seismic safe housing. Emmett Murphy, the ACDI VOCA, chief of party in Haiti, consulted with mayors throughout the country. They decided to give the first REACH grant to a Haitian education association called ABTEC. ABTEC trains workers in new building techniques crucial to this earthquake-prone region. So when we asked Emmett what's the best use of, of $7,000 that we had to contribute out of all of these many, many programs that he is in charge of, he chose this building program for these Haitian men and women, and he needed a consultant. So he contacted a man named Kent from Wyoming, and we had the good luck of meeting Kent a couple of days ago, and he is one of the funniest, most down-to-earth, men I have ever met, but also the smartest. Uh, this is my third job I've done with them, and uh, uh, I, they are a, a together outfit. I enjoy working for them. My, my area is manufacturing and construction. That's what I taught at the University of Wyoming for several years. And they want to train um, potential craftsmen from scratch to uh, build quality structures, light construction, light structures, family structures, nothing over one story. And they want to do it in such a fashion that people can feel safe from any seismic threat and hurricane threat. Of course, if you do something that is uh, seismically uh, solid, then a hurricane is not much of a big deal because you just make sure the roof is tight on tight, right? rather to keep it from blowing away rather than shaking off. This is an incredible opportunity for this group of, of young men and women. Um, they'll be able to change the future of Haiti. For someone to leave this program with the basic tools to build a reasonably, not reasonably, a good house, small single level house, basic skills and basic tools to build a single level house, that's unbelievable. People say, well, why would somebody want to take two weeks away from their job? Uh, or if they're retired now and they're relaxing, why would they want to go off to uh, challenging conditions in the developing world and volunteer for you? Well, for the thought of uh, what I'm doing here, uh, it's not so much the food. Uh, I don't think at that level. Uh, I think at the level is a damn building won't fall on some kid. Some travelers like to get a lay of the land before they land. And what better way than to read the local newspaper? Thepaperboy.com has links to over 6,000 online newspapers around the world. If you have access to a computer, you've opened a world of information and local news. What better way to get a sense of a community, its special events, and a pulse of the hot eateries and happenings in your destination city than to read the local newspaper? You can browse newspapers by city, state, and country, get alerts from local embassies sent to your computer or your phone, and stay on top of the latest news from around the globe, all at the same time and on the same site. It's a newsie's dream. Natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina, the earthquake in Haiti, and the recent disaster in Japan cause many people in the international community to want to volunteer in the relief efforts. Travel Television talks with World Vision, a disaster relief organization that says that untrained volunteers can actually interfere with the efforts of professional emergency responders. And there are better ways to help provide relief. Many people want to heed the call to help and jump on a plane and volunteer in Japan. I'm here with Geraldine Ryerson Cruz from World Vision to tell us why that may not be the best idea. That's right. It's wonderful to see this generous impulse. Um, it's a great, great intention to want to reach in and roll up your sleeves and help people in need. And 
Um, but what we found in responding to 75 to 80 disasters of varying types and sizes each year is really that uh, people who go in, as well-intentioned as they may be, unless they are really trained, very equipped and very coordinated with disaster response peers, um, they can actually bring more challenges and difficulty to the situation rather than help. What kind of challenges might they face? Sure. The, Usually, uh, when people see a disaster uh, in images, in television, in photographs, they, those don't tell the full scope of what's happening on the ground and the difficulties that are faced. So you often will have um, a, a population that is displaced from its homes. There may or may not be enough shelter. Uh, that's a very real consideration for humanitarian workers going into a zone and certainly for anybody who wants to volunteer. You know, the most basic things, where will you stay? Um, what will you eat? Uh, what will you drink? Do you have enough clean water uh, with you for the duration? Do you speak the language? Uh, do you need transportation once you arrive? And people who are practiced in these sort of things have built up uh, ways to get around each of these obstacles and difficulties and coordinate with each other for that. Um, but, but for volunteers coming into a zone, these, these are very important things to think of. You don't want to wind up being a burden on the limited resources in that place um, or detracting from what's available to local people who've been impacted by the disaster because you need to find all of those things for yourself and, and may wind up actually uh, requesting help of other humanitarian workers who were there for the same reason you are rather than serving the local population. If people do want to volunteer on the ground in Japan, how will they know when it's the right time to come help? The key is really to stay informed and know what's going on there and what phase the response is. For a long time, it will be a heavy-duty logistical response and there will be restraints on resources. And groups, both local groups, uh, groups led by the Japanese government and international NGOs uh, will really be the backbone of that response. But over time, it will become uh, much less uh, chaotic may not be the right word for Japan because there's a lot of organization there, but um, a less um, frenetic and immediate response. And over time, they may be able to find groups that they know are doing work in those specific areas and just keep in touch with what they're up to at that time. When they become open to, uh, to volunteers um, or to working with groups that are back in the States, uh, they may extend that invitation and, and that's a good time to, to really start to get involved. Hello, I'm Carlos Palmer and welcome to Style Tour. I'm here with Terry, artist Terry Thompson and we are in his studio working on the video project called Fantastic. Fantastic is a music video effort created by many artists of all disciplines. We have videography, we have fashion, and we have visual art, modeling. We have a, a variety of, of different artists that have all come together to work together on one project in order to benefit Chase Brexton Health Services. Over the past few months, one of our travel television field correspondents and host of Style Tour has been working on a volunteer project in Baltimore that is striving to unify the community and bring together volunteers from all over Maryland. Their goal? To work toward lowering the prevalence of HIV in the state. We're going to show you a sneak peek from behind the scenes of this vital project and a clip from the video. You can see more of this project with music video producers Turner Apple 2001 Productions and hear the entire music track produced by Carlos Palmer, Terry Thompson, DJ Spin, and vocals by Sheila Ford by following Fantastic On and see how the spirit of volunteering is in action in the world of art. No. 
The next time you're thinking of taking a vacation, there are certain health hints you may care to pack away in your mind. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reminds Americans that it's important to take time before your trip to reduce your risk of catching or spreading the flu or other diseases. Vaccines are the most important tool for preventing flu. Talk to your doctor about getting a shot against swine flu and seasonal flu before you travel. Also, if you'll be leaving the country, see a doctor about what vaccines, medicines, and information you'll need. Depending on your situation, your doctor may advise you to take antiviral medications with you when you travel, especially if appropriate medical care is not readily available at your destination. Prepare a travel health kit. Prevention can be travel-sized, including your kit tissues, pain, or fever medicine, soap, and an alcohol-based hand rub to use in case soap and water are not available. You can learn more online at cdc.gov. House with a Heart is a, a nonprofit senior dog sanctuary in Laytonsville, Maryland. We um, are dedicated to providing a loving end of life experience to senior dogs and cats. How can you help us? You can help us by volunteering, by supporting us with your donations, and also by using us to board your pets or for doggy daycare. Uh, we use the funds that we earn from boarding and doggy daycare to support the sanctuary.